very excited to take you on your pasta making culinary adventure today. Now, if you've ever thought that pasta making was just too difficult for you, I am happy to say that it is not difficult at all. You can actually theme your pasta dough or make the flavors match to whatever sauce you're serving it with. For example, if we were to put dill fronds, lemon zest and poppy seeds through this pasta, that would be a fantastic accompaniment to any fish um, that you wanted to put through your pasta or a, a fishy sauce or something with seafood. It would be really beautiful to have that lemon zest and the dill and everything in there representing your uh, main course or what was in your sauce. We could also do, um, if it was with tomato, we could put beautiful fresh basil and um, I've got all sorts of beautiful herbs actually out of my garden here. So we could do fresh basil. We could also do edible petals. It look fantastic when you sheet the pasta dough. So what I'm gonna do is, again, I've got 300 grams of just a double O flour. I'm gonna put my edible petals, and these are dianthus petals. So I grow those in the garden. And if I can grow them, absolutely anyone can grow them. I find they add beautiful pink, a pink blush into the pasta dough and that's going to look really beautiful especially if we're doing one of the larger pastas you probably wouldn't do that if you're doing a spaghetti uh, and to do spaghetti or the um, fettuccine or anything i would highly recommend doing it with a pasta machine however today i'm going to show you how to hand roll this just like nonna used to do it centuries ago before she had a pasta machine but i'll also show you how to do the pasta machine so you at home can choose which way you are wanting to go so i've shredded some of those petals in there um, i've also got some fresh uh, parsley i'll do parsley and basil here now if you're lazy and you don't feel like getting out a chopping board i like to use my kitchen scissors and do a little sneaky little snip um, into straight into the bowl could do is just put two or three mils of beautiful turmeric in there now that will give it a lovely golden glow um, pasta bronzer if you want to call it that and then this is ready for the three eggs so just going in and showing off with my one-handed egg opening i can do two as well but i won't do that um, if you get any shell in there just use the rest of your um, egg shell just to sort of scoop it out i always add a little bit of water so 50 mils to the three eggs and 300 um, grams of flour always works very well for me and i'm just bringing that together again with a strong spoon just so that my hands are uh, nice and clean so that we can get straight to work um, kneading this out so now i've brought it together more or less using that spoon so that the dough is not sticky and difficult to handle again just putting flour on my hands just so that it doesn't stick to me and then i'm going to bring it together just sort of pushing it together with my hand and then i'm going to knead it so you can see this one is starting to look like a very glamorous pasta supermodel it's nice and smooth and i love how that turmeric has made it absolutely gorgeous and vibrant and lemony yellow and all natural so of course i would never use any unnatural sort of colorants turmeric is great for giving your food a culinary spray tan um, or a bronzer now all i'm going to do is do exactly the same uh, to this pasta dough and put it just under a little bit of a uh, in a bowl with some wrapping over it just so it doesn't dry out and this pasta has been resting for enough time so let me show you what we do next so just 10 to 20 minutes you can make this the day before or even put it in the fridge uh, for when you need it but what we do need to do even if you do have the pasta machine is we do need to get this dough ball ready to go in there so you can't just take this and try and put it in there it is definitely going to muffin top and not going to go through so what i like to show you how to do is and you can see it's quite a bit of a workout which is why i'm glad i put just that little bit extra water in because it does make it a little bit easier to handle but of course uh, we, when you're putting it through your pasta machine you don't want a wetter dough at all so i always say this process we need to get this dough no thicker than your earlobe and then it's quite successfully going to go into your pasta machine and i've got mine on the widest setting on mine it says zero but just make sure um, you have a look at your instructions on your pasta machine and make sure it is on the widest setting that it has now just using my rolling pin i've just got this ready i'm just going to make sure that it's going to fit in there 
If not, I can quite easily just cut this down the middle with my pasta cutter and just make it a little bit easier for myself. Now there's many obviously different pastas you can make and this is where it becomes quite exciting because you could literally, using the same recipe, do hundreds and hundreds of different dishes, different pastas and it's a skill that you really should master because fresh pasta is great. It's a wonderful thing for the family to do and very economical. So I do like all of those things. So just putting it through my pasta machine here and I'm just putting it, centering it in the middle so that when I do manage to get this through that I don't have it too far over to the left or to the right. Now if it was any thicker than that, uh, the earlobe thick like I said to you earlier, it would really be battling right now to get through this, um, even the wider setting. So don't stress yourself out. Just um, have a little go before and make sure that there is quite a bit of flour on your pasta because if, if it is a bit wetter or you have a um, maybe a cheap and nasty pasta roller, those rollers are going to clog up. So I always re recommend using a little bit of extra flour for that. So now that it's come through the first pass, I can then put it onto a setting that is just slightly lower and I'm just doing a bit of cosmetic surgery here. Don't tear it, but I'm just getting it so that it's a perfect um, shape or a rectangle when we get to the other side. So this is lots of fun, guys. So now we are getting somewhere, all right? So this is getting lovely and long and quite thin and depending on what you're making, you'll have to adjust uh, the thickness. A thick, lazy pasta does not eat well, so don't just stop um, because you know you wanted to do something else it really does benefit when you have it in your mouth and it's a lovely thin delicate sophisticated pasta it really is going to eat uh, much better so I'm just dropping this to um, just so that it's narrow every single time it is handy if you have someone to help you but you can quite easily do this yourself I always use the obscene amounts of flour trick because then it doesn't ever seem to stick um, so just use a bit of flour there and of course you can cut it in half and make it easier to handle but I think this looks quite fabulous um, and we're going to do exactly the same to our pimped up pasta and I'll show you what we do next. There's a few things that are super easy to do and I love you to have a quick easy solution instead of doing something that's going to stress you out um, completely. With these, if we had to cut these with a lovely sharp knife into rectangles, you would of course have fresh lasagna sheets. How awesome is that? So just take a nice sharp knife and these can be stored in your fridge. You can even put them with a little bit of uh, paper in between, just into your freezer. And the next time you wanna make a sexy lasagna and of course tell all your friends and your family that you made it yourself. What we could also do is other than keeping a few aside and I like to keep always a few aside so that I have them for the next lasagna that I make because my family loves it. But what we need to do, and I'm going to show you how to use the other side of this pasta machine, is we can do a fettuccine. Now, if you are doing this by hand and you've used a rolling pin, my advice to you is when you're rolling it on the surface, use lots of flour and keep it moving. So don't roll it out and it's stuck to the counter. That will take your stress levels uh, way up. So once we've got the pasta to this stage is... We're just going to take the little handle and pop it in this side. And if you wanted to, you could actually leave this on the counter just to get a nice little crust. Now, now if your pasta machine, for some reason, doesn't have that fancy uh, tagliatelle or spaghetti fitting, what you can do is if you've got a nice sharp knife, we can actually hand cut these um, into a parpadel or something. So just a one centimeter cut and just ribbon cut it and then you can hang it over the back of a chair or if you've got a pasta dryer, uh, drying rack, you can use that. But we are going to take this through and make a gorgeous fettuccine. So again, I always flour that and we do it just the same as the other side. So I always recommend when these come out, if you are going to store them, and you can see how gorgeous and delicate and very sophisticated they are, put a little bit of flour on. Just in case they do decide to stick back together, your language would go very bad if you had done all that work and your, your dough was a little bit wetter than mine. So this now can be dried out. Um, you can even make them into nice little neat bundles. And 
we are just going to leave this guy to the side because I'm quite happy if he just dries out a bit. So with the other dough that we pimped up, the gorgeous one with the turmeric and the petals, um, we're going to do exactly the same thing. So look at the contrast in the color here. Let me bring it closer for you. All right. So if I was serving this to my friends and family, I would tell them everything that I put in there and encourage them to make their own too. Now, ravioli is quite easy to make. Um, I will do a, another episode and show you how to do that. But today, I just wanted to show you some beautiful, easy pasta making solutions so that you tried this at home. Of course, the secret is in the sauce that you serve it with. But my family love it when I make them a beautiful, fresh pasta, some gorgeous extra virgin olive oil, some chili, some parsley, and of course, some shaved pecorino or parmesan cheese. Enjoy, guys. <laughs> <laughs>